Hey everyone, this is Case and Knight over at iSolids 3D Printing, and we're an additive manufacturing service provider located in Texas. And this is a series that we're calling 3D Print Farm After Hours, where we simply answer some of the comments and questions that we've gotten on social media. So if you have any of those, put them down below, and we'll try to make it a topic of a future video. Today, we're gonna to focus in on environmental conditions and air quality, which is a really great topic because it applies to not only the technical aspect of what we do to ensure that we have high quality parts, but it also applies to our employee safety as well. So we're gonna dig into this topic with four different variables. We're gonna look at temperature, humidity, particulate matter, and VOCs. I'm gonna start first by analyzing temperature, which is really important for the two technologies you see behind me. That is the FDM and multi-jet fusion technologies in the corner. With FDM or filament technologies, it's obviously important because you're extruding filament through a hot nozzle and typically have a cooling fan behind that. If the ambient temperature is too high, you might just be overheating the machine, but also leading to part quality issues. If the ambient temperature is too low, then you could have a common effect known as warping, where you're generating thermal stress and causing the part to curl up and not be as dimensionally accurate or just not look as good. Similarly, with the powder-based technology like multi-jet fusion, if the ambient temperature is too high, then you could lead to the machine just simply not allowing itself to cool fast enough and putting stress on the machine. If the ambient temperature is too low, then they might not have enough thermal energy to cause the level of fusing that we want on each layer, and it leads to an effect called elephant skin, which basically just causes surface roughness on the part, which is not ideal. Our solution to mitigate this is to one, target around a 75 to 80 degree temperature inside the shop. The most important thing is consistency though. We'd rather it be around 78 degrees and consistent than range between 70 and 80 degrees and be inconsistent. Our solution to this is to just supply as much air conditioning capacity as we can. We have around a 10,000 square foot facility with most of that being a two-story air volume. We are located in Houston, Texas where Temperatures in the summertime in particular can range above 100 degrees for days or even weeks at a time. To solve this, we simply have a lot of air conditioning units, eight of them in total. So if any one particular unit would go down, then a lot of the other units could keep up with our daily needs. And it equates to around 18 tons of total capacity, which is quite a bit given our air volume. The results are around what we would normally want to see, around 75 to 80 degrees on average, which is great. It allows us to do what we need to do and it maintains our employees' comfort. Next, we'll examine humidity, which is equally as important in the 3D printing process. With FDM, the materials are typically hygroscopic to some degree, meaning that they pull in moisture from the outside air or the ambient air into the filament itself prior to being printed. That means that if you have a lot of moisture in the filament, then you could lead to extrusion issues such as bubbling or just layer adhesion strength. Well, as would be expected to combat this, we would want the ambient temp or the ambient humidity to be as low as possible. Unfortunately though, with our powder-based technologies, we kind of want a little bit of the opposite. We actually need some moisture in the air because if the amb our ambient humidity is too low, it could lead to static electricity being built up or the powder not having a little bit of moisture in the air to help with the fusing process. We primarily focus on our powder-based technologies in this case because, well, we're in Houston, Texas where there's high humidity and there's very little that we can get the humidity to be as low as we would want it to be, at least for our storage. So we target around 40% relative humidity. HP recommends around 30 to 80%. So we target around 40% as our target. And typically we see around 40 to 50% on average, especially during the summer months. Well, in order to solve the filament based issues, we actually store all of our extremely hygroscopic, mostly exotic materials like peak polycarbonates and those types of materials in an industrial dry box that actually has the humidity less than 1%. And then most of those filaments go into a dryer heating element as it's being printed. So rather than regulating the entire environment, we just more or less regulate the specific materials and the printers in that case with those more hygroscopic materials, which is much more environmentally friendly and reasonable in the process. Lastly, particulate matter and VOCs are extremely important from an employee safety perspective. As I mentioned in previous videos, we most commonly print ABS and ASA in our 3D print farm, which are known to generate some VOCs. In our multi-jet fusion process, it's a very fine powder that could become airborne. Obviously, these are concerns for our employee safety. First and foremost, we want to regulate the air quality and monitor it as much as possible. We've tried all sorts of different monitors, but we've actually converged on a relatively inexpensive but high quality monitor from Amazon. The reason we've done this is one, it's inexpensive, so we can have a lot of monitors placed 
all throughout the shop so we can regulate all of the areas. We don't want to just monitor one area when there's a lot of activity and air volume in here. We, with these monitors, we measure the temperature, the humidity, the particulate matter, and the VOC, all four variables that we've examined here. And that's actually where the data that you've seen is being extracted from. These monitors are great because it also has a little LED indicator. If the threshold gets above something that we believe is unsafe, then it will turn yellow if it's in a moderate zone or red if it's in a dangerous zone. Our employees have different PPE that they know to wear if these lights indicate a certain condition. And there are also email notifications that are sent if any one of our monitors go beyond something that we believe is safe. Obviously, PPE such as face masks are the most important defense mechanism for this issue. But we also want to just maintain the air quality as best we can. Our way of doing this is having a lot of circulation and just having a lot of air volume. The fact that we do have a large facility with two story ceilings means that there's a ton of air volume so we don't have VOCs concentrated into a small space. I also mentioned previously that we have a lot of air conditioning units. This means we have a lot of air circulation throughout the day. In addition to that, what I haven't already mentioned is we have two massive dehumidifiers which also circulate air conditioning on top of also air purifiers. So we have air conditioning, air dehumidifiers, and air purifiers all throughout the shop to have a lot of air circulation. So most of that particulate matter, as it does become into the air, is quickly pulled out as soon as possible. You can actually see that in some of the data by little spikes when the machines are typically opened up and cleaned. This causes some stirring of the powder and there's more particulates in the air but you can see that it quickly levels back off because of the amount of circulation that we are able to have with all of our different systems. Overall, it is a little bit difficult, mainly because of our geographic location that we do have to supply a lot of air conditioning, dehumidification, and circulation, but we do our best to maintain these conditions as best as possible. And generally we do have a lot of consistency that allows us to do what we need to do. Thanks for posing the question. It was a great one. I'm glad that people were thinking about our employee safety. And if you have any other further questions, like I mentioned previously, just put them down below. We'll see if we can make it a topic of a future video. Thanks for taking the time to watch this. And if you want to learn more about what we do, go to i-solids.com and reach out to us. Thanks everyone.